Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Guankin G20022 homage to Longines Master Collection Moonface. Let's start out with the wrist check. I'm wearing my L'Oreal L9201G homage to the Rolex Mariner with the purple dial. And Greg was wearing my G Shock GD350. I asked Grogo if he had any hobbies. He said he collects spores, mold, and fungus. I said, ha ha, just like in the movie. He said, what movie? Here's the watch. This watch homages the Longines Master Moon Phase, which is quite expensive for a Longines considering the movement and its complications. The Longines is an automatic chronograph with a perpetual calendar and moon phase. That's going to cost you money. This watch is in the $60 range and so you cannot expect all the features of a very complicated watch. This watch is indeed an automatic, but unfortunately most of the other similarities are strictly cosmetic. This is not a chronograph. There is no such thing as an affordable automatic chronograph. Also, there is a calendar, but it is not exactly perpetual. Perpetual means that you set the calendar and only have to set it again during those pesky leap years. That is quite a big deal for a mechanical movement, and you are not going to find that in a watch at this price point. Then there is the moon phase. That too is way beyond the capability of this watch, and thus the moon phase dial is in actuality a glorified AM PM indicator, with the sun representing noon and the moon representing midnight. The watch is 39.7 millimeters at the bezel, but 41 millimeters at the case, 46.6 millimeters lug to lug, 13.5 millimeters thick, has a 20 millimeter lug width, and weighs 92 grams on the supplied leather strap. This watch has a smooth bezel. The dial is a nice guloch style. The Guankin name and logo is applied. The minute markers are on the chapter ring. See, they're on the chapter ring. And the numbers on the dial are the actual days of the month. With this little uh, hand with the moon on it pointing to the current date. The indices are painted on, but have a smooth top that doesn't show the dial pattern. See if I can get a little bit closer. The top subdial shows the year and the month and has a 30 minute indicator. On the real watch, you don't have the year, so I guess that is one thing this watch does that the other does not. Of course, most people know what year it is. This subdial will be a minute counter for the chronograph on the real watch. Since this is not a chronograph, they added the 30 minute dial so the subdial hand would not be completely useless. However, it is severely misaligned. On the left, we have another repurposed subdial. On the real watch, we have the running second hand plus the 24 hour hand. On this one, the small hand is the day of the week indicator. But unfortunately, the 24 hour hand is permanently attached to the day of the week indicator and, and it, you can't change it. So it's always going to be at this angle from the day of the week indicator. So it's basically just a prop hand. The bottom subdial may look like a moon phase, but is in reality an AM PM indicator with the sun indicating noon and the moon indicating midnight. Here, let me show you. See, as we go there, there's the moon. We hit midnight. Ta-da. And then as we keep going, here comes the sun. So this is not a true moon phase watch. Once again, though, uh, that would be uh, quite impressive for a $60 automatic to have a true moon phase. Also, this hand here is synced up with the moon phase, where on the real watch it would be a 12, it would be the hour indicator of the chronograph. This one is basically a 24 hour indicator but since there's only 12 hours in the dial, you have to double everything. So you look at the 6 and you have to double it and make it a 12. 
The unloomed blue hands are thin but easily readable. The second hand is really thin, but that stands out nicely on the white dial. And of course, as I explained earlier, the hand with the moon at the end is the day of the month indicator. This is, once again, this is not a true perpetual calendar, so it does not know how to deal with the short months. So if it's uh, April 30th, and you, so let's say it's April 30th, and the day rolls over, all you have to do is press this bottom pusher twice, and it takes you to the first. So setting the date is really easy because of this pusher. You don't even have to pull the crown. Then also, when the day rolls over, though, the month does not roll over. So you have to set the month manually also. But that's easy enough to do, too, because then you just use this top pusher. And then you can ch just change the month. So it's really easy to do. So once again, it's not a tragedy that it's not perpetual. Then to change the year, you have another pusher, but it's an inlaid pusher. So you have to actually get a tool to do it but then it changes the year and obviously if the month doesn't roll over automatically the year does not either the year starts at 2021 which i assume is the year this watch is produced and it only goes to 2032 though so you only got since it's almost 2022 you only got a good 10 years of use of this watch before the year becomes obsolete of course, you could just roll it over again back to 2021, and then you could take a magic marker and put, put plus 10 on the bottom. Then there is one more button, another inlaid button, and this changes the day of the week. It is quite obvious that the calendar complications are not part of the movement other than the day indicator, but I think Wonkin does a fairly good job of making a rather busy dial somewhat useful despite the limitations of the basic three hand with date movement. The push pull crown is signed with the letter G for Guankin. Not the Guankin logo, but the letter G. The flat sapphire crystal does a nice job of not reflecting the light. You can see through it just fine. I tested it with my diamond tester and it is indeed sapphire. They claim stainless steel for the case, but I have my suspicions due to the fact that the case is 100% polished, which can imply chrome plating. However, it's got some pretty good heft to it, so I thought that maybe it's, it is steel. The easiest way to tell is, is scratch marks from a strap changing tool. So I tried to scratch it with a tool on the bottom of a lug and I didn't see any noticeable alloy. So I'll give Guanquin the benefit of a doubt. The movement has no markings or reference number. I would assume that is a Chinese knockoff of a Miyota 8215 since it hand winds, does not hack, and has a unidirectional rotor. I did a time graph and it was running about two seconds slow. On a hacking watch, you want it to run fast. On a non-hacking watch, it really doesn't matter. So that's some pretty good accuracy for this $60 watch. And it does have a display case back, and the rotor is signed. And uh, this is only a 30 meter watch, so this is not a screw down case back. If you want to remove it, it pops off with a tool. The leather strap has an alligator pattern. It's sturdy, but soft enough that it needs a little break in. It doesn't have the glossy shine of a higher quality strap, but it still looks nice. Instead of a buckle, it comes with a sign deployment clasp, which is nice. Unfortunately, though, it's a friction clasp. We're not a push button clasp, so that's a. It's not as nice as it could be. I know I'm complaining. I have a friend that used to say that I would complain if I was hung with a new rope. I tend to always put a deployment clasp on any leather strap watch I keep because it just really saves the strap. Because you don't have to bend it to put it through the, the first keeper. So it's really nice that it did come with one. So I shouldn't complain. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. Seems to wear nice. I like it. As you can see, I'm on the third notch. So you can wear it quite a bit smaller. 
but if you're much much bigger you might have to get a different strap but i like it i think it looks nice and there is no loom on this watch so we will not be taking a trip to the loom room what do i like about this watch well i like the powder and white dial with the blue hands i think that really looks sharp I like the fact that it comes with the deployment clasps that sign so I don't have to go buy one from AliExpress. And I like the fact that setting the date is really easy. I mean, man, you can just do it with the pushers. That makes it simple. So what are my gripes and groans? Well, it's not a true moon phase watch. And the year ends in 2032. And some of the usefulness of these subdials is a little suspect. And the deployment clasp is in a push button. But those are really pretty minor gripes and groans. Do I recommend this watch? Yes. Once again, all my gripes and groans are just the reality of an affordable automatic watch with complications. You are not going to get a real perpetual calendar or moon phase for this price. But you are going to get a very nice looking watch. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Guanquin G20022 Amish to Longines Master Collection Moon Phase. And be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. And I will be back with another review or unboxing. Bye.